Are you interested or trading cryptocurrency, but you're struggling to understand what the heck the difference is between a Bitcoin and Ethereum and EOS and Link and Yearn and Sushi and so forth? If so, this is the video for you. Hi everybody, this is Brandon with Crypto Trades and Tech, and today I'm going to give you a preview of my Crypto 101 presentation and training session that I'm working on and working up. And what I'm asking for is community participation. I don't have this all figured out just yet how I want to lay this out. And I would love your feedback and thoughts on either projects that I need to include in here and why I need to include them or if I need to organize them differently. But let's just get straight to it here. What I've done is I've started to sort cryptocurrency projects by the main types that I see. Now, for me, uh, Bitcoin is the king of cryptocurrencies, and I'll probably do a Bitcoin 101 video before too long here. But outside of that, there's there's the compute or smart contract platforms like Ethereum, Cardano, Ethereum, Cardano Tezos, Algorand, uh, EOS, uh, some of the main ones. Uh, then to me, there's also these utility tokens, things that are built on top of another platform that provide utility to the blockchain. So I think of uh, Link and Cosmos and Dot and VeChain and uh, Orchid as, as those type of projects. And then, the, and then a lot of these utility tokens are used in the DeFi space, but the pure DeFi plays, I think, are uh, things like, I have Linden A, which is basically the same thing on here, or Yearn Finance or Maker. Um, and then I've got decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, Sushi, and then other types of lightweight cryptocurrencies, I'll call them, or lightweight currencies like Dash and Litecoin. Now, I'm sure I'm missing a whole bunch, and I'm really trying to comb through and just really filter down what I think are quality projects that are worthy of being included on this list. So please uh, put your thoughts below. Let's just do a quick rundown of what uh, what these different projects are for those of you that don't know. Now in the platform space, most people know Ethereum. It's the original smart contract. Cardano's, I have a whole video on Cardano. Check that out. Um, okay, so back to this. Tezos was the first to introduce staking, and they call it baking on their platform. Um, Algorand is another comp very competitive platform. It uh, was founded by an MIT professor, uh, Silvio, Silvio Milica, Milkali, I always get his name wrong, I'm so sorry. Um, and then we've got EOS on here, which is another very competitive platform, but there's some caution with them, there's some legal issues with their co-founder. I've gone over these in other videos. In fact, I'm going to put a link to that other video on my current watch list, which explains a lot of these projects. And let's move on here to the rest of my presentation. So, I've got a simple... I want to very simply explain to people what is the blockchain. And uh, I do have another video that I'll link in this one that explains the kind of 101 of buying Bitcoin. And there I very simply explain what is a blockchain. But uh, this is a quick preview. It's really just taking a, some data and then locking that up, signing it cryptographically, sharing that with the network and then starting a new, you could call it a, a, a text file if you wanted really, um, of information that you're going to record and then you're going to, at the end of a certain amount of time, you stop recording that data, you sign that, locked it up cryptographically and share that with the rest of the network. That's pretty much what, what, what's going on with the blockchain. And what Bitcoin is recording is what's called unspent transaction output. So basically, it's a series of wallet addresses and your unspent funds, or how much money you have available to spend at the end of that, that block, that gets locked up, signed cryptographically, and moved on, right? All right, so what is a smart contract? Well, uh, a smart contract is kind of a misnomer. It's actually just a computer program. It's an immutable computer program. So you write a, a program that has certain inputs and outputs, and if, those, if certain inputs are met, and certain conditions are met, then certain outputs happen. That's that's what happens. And if once a contract is written and locked onto the chain, if you need to adjust anything, you have to write another smart contract, a security mechanism. All right, then my next thing here is we go over proof of work versus proof of stake. 
Um, and just for a quick overview, proof of work is uh, rewards are based on compute power. So the more compute power you have, the more likely you are to solve the complex mathematical problem. So the first person that solves that problem, the first computer that solves that problem, they get to sign that block, they get the rewards and the transactions from that block. Now proof of stake is your rewards are based on your investment. So the more investment you make into the system, the more likely you are to be selected to uh, sign a, a block basically and, and keep the transaction profits. And rewards are paid to these validator nodes, which are the equivalent of, of proof of work miners. And then I have a slide here. I probably should move these around. I'd love feedback on this, but why is Bitcoin different? Um, and it really comes down to the organic nature which it come, came into the market, being kind of the first mover, but on top of that, the timing around it, the 2008 financial crisis. Um, and yes, it is the first mover in the space. It's subject to winner-take-all dynamics, that's a mouthful to explain. Um, Robert Breedlove's An Open Letter to Ray Dalio says it best. I'll link that video uh, in this. And then it has the largest network by far. It's just the most secure, and it's truly decentralized. So any of these other projects, if you know the founders and the people that are running the projects, um, it, is it really decentralized because they still have control of the project and a significant say and they can influence the community? But nobody knows who Satoshi is. It's truly decentralized. It's truly run by the people. Uh, nobody has a, a, a top-down say in the project anymore. All right, so I have a, a section here that I call these decentralized programmable blockchains. So again, uh, Ethereum, the original smart contracts compute platform. ADA, uh, they're trying to be crypto 3.0. I think they're the leader in the technology theoretically. Um, they're very open and transparent and they have the most development activity. EOS, they were uh, an early one to do proof of stake, but they the reason they were able to do proof of stake so quick is they developed this delegated proof of stake or DPoS. Basically, what happens with the proof of stake is it's not actually proof of stake. The stakers are actually simply voting on delegates to be the validators of the network. And when they have a small pool of delegators, it's very much, it's very, e uh, it's a lot easier to manage that. So that's why they were able to get out the gate with a quote unquote proof of stake. But it's not really proof of stake. It's really a voting system. And it's a centralized select few of delegators that, that are re-voted. So they, 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 they will be, um, you know, elected and, and pulled out as, as time goes on. But there's a lot of legal issues with this project, too. There's a uh, co-founder left, and they're suing each other and so forth and so on. Um, Tezos, uh, they had an early staking implementation, but there's fairly low development activity on Tezos. Uh, Zalika, they were the first to roll out this sharded blockchain, um, you know, and that's really great and all, but... A, sharding has a lot of problems itself that haven't been proven to be worked out on a distributed ledger system, a blockchain. Um, so it's still very much unknown. Um, Algorand, uh, another really good project. It's an Ethereum co-founder. Uh, this I had talked about earlier. I uh, got his name in here, Silvio Macaulay. And the reason I put his name in here is because when you look up anything on Algorand, they talk a lot about their founder. So he's a super influential figure, and, and really you can't talk about the project without talking about the founder. However, um, they make a lot about the fact that he's an MIT professor and all this other stuff, but their documentation I find to be fairly secretive. And then there's XRP. A lot of people like XRP. They think that they're a great blockchain. They're not decentralized. It's a centralized, controlled entity. So... I do not consider them decentralized. Uh, they may have a blockchain, but they're not at all decentralized, so I, I can't count them. All right, utility tokens, I've only got a few listed on here so far, but Link, I have a whole video on Link. I can, I can post that video below, uh, the bridge between crypto and DeFi, uh, I consider it. Dot, they're trying to be a link between crypto, and then Cosmos is trying to be, it's, I put a pseudo link, they're trying to be the internet of blockchain. Basically, they want to con disconnect the separate blockchains. The problem I have with Dot and Cosmos is I think there's a lot of work in like Ethereum and Cardano to build native interoperability to their platforms. So I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of other projects. And, and when I get my head wrapped around the use cases for uh, interconnecting a lot of these other projects, like maybe VeChain would be a really good example of one that's a, um, it's a blockchain that's focused on... What's the word I'm looking for? 
supply chain. They're 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 after the supply chain. So when we look at a lot of these other projects that um, you know, I need to understand where the value is in interconnecting some of these other projects back to like Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or whatever. Um, and and if if I understand that better, then I'll be more excited about like Dot and Cosmos. But until I understand that better, which I don't. I don't have a good understanding of where the value proposition is. I'm just not as excited about them. I have a very clear understanding of where the value proposition is for Link and connecting the, you know, the blockchain cryptocurrency ecosystem to the outside world. Now, Stellar is another one. Stellar is, um, I should put on here, Stellar is trying to interconnect the legacy financial world. I very much get their use case. The problem is... I'm just not comfortable with with how regulation and things are going to shake out there. And I also, there's other, again, these other platforms are working on similar things in parallel. So I think they just have a little more competition than you might think. Um, I've got DeFi up here, um, just a definition. Uh, but So this is a, a quick preview of my Crypto 101. Um, I hope you guys got something out of this. If this is all new to you, then um, let me know in the comments that... that you, like there's there's a lot of topics that we still need to dive into and let me know what those topics are uh, if you disagree with let me go back to this with how I've organized these if you think that there's a much better way to organize these or if you think there's a project I've left off this list that you would like to see included uh, please let me know in the comments and uh, maybe just a few words about why you like the project so that I can put it on my list I have a couple of guys I'm working with to continually research and find really good projects for you guys to bring up I've had some requests to do like a top 10 sleepers list or something like that. So I'm kind of working on that right now. I do have a couple of very, very small caps that I'm looking at trying to understand their value add. If you like this content, please like and subscribe and thank you for all your support. And please be feel free with the comments. If, if I ever mess anything up, feel free to tell me, hey, you messed this up. You got this wrong. You won't offend me. And I'm not like I probably... If you're gonna troll me, I, I, I'm just gonna ignore you. I don't, I don't really interact with trolls at all. But um, if if you have a legitimate like uh, either concern or you just notice that I just flat got something wrong, please let me know. I I have zero qualms about being wrong. I just want to know the truth, and that's all I really care about. So again, thank you so much, and uh, you guys have a great day.